Okay, I'm Robert Garcia here with Nuke the Fridge. I'm here with the visual effects supervisor for Thor Ragnarok, Jake Morrison. Sir, thank you for, uh, for taking the time to talk to us. It's a pleasure. So, uh, congratulations on the film. Like I said, I, I saw it last night. Um, so much fun. Like you just mentioned, uh, you know, think you, you might have got every color in there. I think we did. We worked very hard to get all of them in. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I'm going to start off with, um, tell us about your work on Thor Ragnarok. Um, any uh, key sequences that were challenging or, or were of uh, you know pers personal uh, gratification? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd start off by saying that whatever you do, if you're making a motion picture, don't make the Hulk fight a 35 foot tall mega wolf at the edge <laughs> of the Niagara Falls. I think that would be my first thing to say because that is hard. I right. think that the gang uh, of our friends at Frame Store who completed that shot, whew, mm -hmm. that's crazy stuff. Um, but practically speaking, I think one of the things that was uh, probably the most um, challenging on this one is the fact that we've got two key fully CG characters that tell jokes. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard, and as any actor will tell you, drama is hard, but uh, comedy is harder. Right. And you never want to be uh, the, um, the department that failed the film, to mm -hmm. be like, well, I didn't like the film because the comedy didn't yeah. work. So we've got, we, you know, we've got uh, Hulk, who's mm -hmm. actually, I mean, I was delighted to find out that Mr. Ruffalo was going to be in the film, you know, because I figured that meant we had a Hulk. And then, yeah, somewhat surprised to discover that um, he was actually going to crack jokes, mm -hmm. which, uh, which I think he does really well. Right. But we kind of went back to first principles on that one, actually, and rebuilt the Hulk from scratch completely. Oh wow! So was uh, did you have an actor in a suit for that for the um, for the Hulk scenes, and then you know uh, just basically put it in uh, after a production? Well, yeah. I mean, what we did is because Taika Waititi, our director, is is really is very much like a, an improv guy. He likes you know as an actor himself, but also as a director, he likes to make sure that. Um, there are happy accidents. So you do the script, you do the scripted lines, and then he'll start pushing buttons and throwing things out. So he said to me at the beginning, what he wanted to do was absolutely not cut. So what he didn't want to do is have all this technology and all this fancy stuff that we had in there, and then suddenly have to, like, okay, we've got to take now, like 15 technicians would run in and disassemble things and do wires and stuff. He's like, I, I, I don't want that at all. I want to be able to shoot this like I have any of my other pictures. So what we did is we made it so all of the technology was actually built into the sets we started off with. We actually built cameras, motion capture cameras, around the sets. In some cases, we built them into the walls of the sets. So they're actually like pop-off sections, like in the prison scene. Mm -hmm. There are sections of the wall that pop out, and if you take them out, there are the motion capture cameras behind there. And if you mm -hmm. had a scene where you didn't need them, you just put them back on again. So you know, we, the integration was there, and then we did a really... We had Mr. Ruffalo there, and we had Mr. Hemsworth there. Mm -hmm. So those, those two guys are just doing a lot of improv and a lot of riffing and all the rest of it. And Tyker's throwing lines out and just getting them off balance and like the whole scene where they're sort of throwing bits and pieces across the room at each other mm -hmm. and then you know the tiff and then you know the sitting on the bed and you know like like I'm sorry I called you, you know all that that business. Like all that stuff is you know some of it's scripted but a lot of it's improv and a lot of it's fun. And um, we actually built a system that allowed us to you could the camera operator like with the with the motion picture camera could look through the eyepiece. And when, when he saw Chris, he would see Chris, and when he panned across to see Mark, instead of seeing Mark, he would see the Hulk live overlaid. But of course, because the Hulk is actually eight foot six, mm -hmm. that meant that if you're doing a pan from here to here from one character, you didn't do that, you actually did this. So it meant we oh. respected all the, you know, and if, if the Hulk walks, the Hulk walks like a lot faster than, than Mark does, you know, like three steps from Mark. Like the whole room's covered if the Hulk does it. So we did the same thing with that. If, uh, if the camera operator watched Mark, literally Mark would just stay behind and you would just be panning across and follow the Hulk all the way across the room and then come back again. So it was like a magnifier on all the performance. So we built all this technology just to make sure that Taika was able to just have everybody acting completely as he was used to. Uh, and then to the point at which we ended up uh, <coughs> with Mr. Taika actually appearing in the film is a certain <clears throat> blue, seven foot six tall uh, Cronin, which um, uh, I didn't see coming. <laughs> but it was really fun, because he always does a cameo in all of his pictures. Oh. So uh, we knew he'd do something. Mm -hmm. And then we had like a lineup of uh, different gladiators that we put together for, for Sakaar. And at a certain point, he obviously picked that one. And then we started seeing more and more Korg in the movie. And he's such a, such a great character. Right. 
basically being able to make him um, kind of Thor's best mate in the picture mm -hmm. is, is really refreshing and the fact that he's you know fully made of rocks um, yeah. and every single hopefully the audience will never think of this every single one of those rocks does not squash or stretch or anything because if you did it would look like latex and like just a guy in a suit um, so every single facial motion, bit of speech, any movement across the body, any of that stuff, all of the layers of rocks are moving back and forth across each other like tectonic plates. And, but the, the art in there is making that feel natural and never looking at it like it's a technical exercise. And so uh, it's, it really is like uh, on a technical level, incredibly challenging. And some of the lines that Taika had us uh, perform, you know, the um, looks like he had a very special and intimate relationship with that hammer and that losing it was like that kind of stuff. Having a rock monster say that <laughs> in basically a lock off here is uh, is another new challenge. So with with Thor, would you say um, as the uh, as a supervisor for the visual effects, is your is your position or your role? Do you find it more artistic or technical uh, technical like in this realm? Uh, it's artistic primarily and then technical at the back end so because I'm involved in the project from the very beginning mm -hmm. and it's literally it's at that stage it's script and it's storyboards and it's um, then we start putting together previous stuff and cutting sequences together it's very much blue sky territory at that stage like the movie can you have an idea what it might be and some of the cool stuff and but you know uh, scripts are very organic uh, in the sense of you know like from you know from script to completion is a long time two years so um, there's a lot of opportunities to um, make suggestions, to design you know, action sequences like in a more exciting way, to suggest certain framings, or certain shots that might be a better way to tell a story. If you can tell a story in a cool shot rather than do three shots, then that's a good thing to do. Um, and really just sort of riff, because at the beginning it, it really is just you know, the, the director and the creative executive and, and myself. Uh, are usually the ones like you're on the project so there's a lot of design mm -hmm. and then that design morphs into how you're going to shoot this thing like what bits are real what bits are not real and we get into like what bits are set and we're going to build and what bits can be virtual extensions how we're going to do like the technical stuff like the motion capture and how we're going to get the performances and then we go through and we post fizz the whole thing and actually bring all of that shot footage and then we put in like the rock monsters and we put mm -hmm. in all that stuff create the cut and then it becomes still always a design because always design challenges but then it becomes technical at the end where why doesn't the shot look real what can we do to make it look real what are the sweeteners what are the lens fixes we can do you know why oh that character doesn't have a reflection that's why they look fake i mean that kind of stuff it becomes technical at the end but it's really the whole spread wow now <clears throat> you've worked uh, you you also worked on ant-man i did and all of the uh you know it's still within the marvel universe um but how do you think it, it differs as far as look and texture of the of two different movies? Like Thor has a look, has a certain look. Yes. And and then when you and then your work on Ant Man, that was I, I've seen that movie and it's completely different, but still within the, the the Marvel universe. So how how do you you know separate the two projects, but you know with still the understanding of hey these these characters still coexist within the same you know uh, Marvel stories. Uh, I would say that, that Marvel as a studio are really supportive of letting the filmmaker like dictate the visual style. So I mean in this case in this case Taika's look, his particular look is a very formal composition, like he is an artist in his own right. So he if you look through um, well, if you look at this kind of thing, entirely symmetrical. So if you look and piece through the, the film, you'll see that there's it's almost kind of Kubrick kind of feel to the whole thing, mm. where there's very, very solid composition, it's very formal, you're looking right down the Rainbow Bridge, you're looking right back at the palace, split the lens, it's the rule of twos, or halves, depending on how you like it. Uh, a lot of push in and pull back stuff, like very different, very different style, no handheld work at all. Mm -hmm. Whereas on Ant-Man, <clears throat> I literally ran out of snap zooms that I could do because we found that um, Peyton really liked uh, our director on, on Ant-Man really actually kind of dug like the 70s style like uh, snap zooms where you're looking at something and you suddenly zoom in and we found early on that that was a really strong way of the audience understanding that Ant-Man had shrunk because you can be at a certain point in a room, a certain physical place, have Scott Lang as a full-size person, have them shrink down to the table and then zoom in and the perspective doesn't change in the room, it just gets bigger. So you understand, you still understand where you are. So I think I used all of them. 
Um, all of the snap zooms I was allowed mm -hmm. to do at a certain point there was a cut off and they said you can't do it anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah. so you've really just used the right tools that are right for the storytelling, guided by the guided by the director. Right, uh, Jake Morrison. Again, congratulations on Thor Ragnarok, and you guys did pull off that scene with uh, with Hulk and, and the giant wolf. It, it was phenomenal, but uh, it, it was a great ride. Again, congratulations, and uh, thanks for talking to us today. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Excellent.